Hello, welcome back to my channel. This is Bluefin Design and I'm Nikhil. And in this video, we are going to be looking at surveys for UX research. So as you know, we're actually in the middle of a UX case study for language translation. And uh, I've shared quite a few videos earlier about different research methods, for example, competitive analysis, market analysis, uh, market research, sorry, uh, user interviews, focus groups. So if you haven't checked those videos out, uh, do make sure uh, to, to check those videos and I'm sure you'll learn something. And if you do, uh, hit that like button as well. So as I mentioned uh, in this video, we're going to be talking about surveys for UX research. And uh, in this video, uh, we'll talk about what a survey is, uh, quantitative versus qualitative surveys. Uh, don't worry, it's not uh, difficult. Um, I'll also share some tips for uh, conducting surveys successfully and also some tools that you may want to use uh, for your UX surveys. And in the end, uh, I'll also share the set of questions that I'm going to use for my survey uh, for the language translation project. And so if you uh, want to answer those questions, I'd really appreciate um, I'll add a link to the survey down in the description. So let's get started. Oh, wait, hold on. Did you hit that like button? Please do so. Thank you. So what is a survey? Well, to put it simply, it's a set of questions designed to obtain feedback from your target audience. Um, you can circulate the list of questions to your audience. For example, if you have existing customers or you have some early adopters of your product or a service or some potential users of your product. Um, you can also complete these surveys uh, independently during the user's time and they don't require you to in you know, like interact with them as in a one-on-one -on -one interview or a focus group. So it's really flexible in terms of the time and that allows you to actually gain much more uh, time and uh, responses from the surveys. So what exactly is a quantitative survey? Uh, well, they count the results. So any question that you can uh, receive an answer in form of uh, numbers or quantities that you can actually count it as a quantitative question in a survey. For example, uh, how many people went to this particular location versus how did they go to that location? So we're actually counting uh, the number of people instead of uh, how they reached the location. You can understand patterns from like a large set of quantitative questions or responses that you get from your users. So let's say um, from like 100 people who responded to your surveys, if 60 people use a particular product as compared to its competitor, you can understand uh, patterns that 60% of your user base is actually uh, inclined towards one particular product. Um, in terms of the questions that you can share, um, you can provide cho choices like uh, check boxes or radio buttons, or I think in the newer tools, you can also have um, the, uh, the range uh, to select from, like how do you feel about this or how many people feel um, extremely good about a product, like that's a quantitative question too. So what is a qualitative survey question? Um, well, these questions are open-ended and uh, they ask, they are intended to get the behavior out of the, out of the user. So for example, um, one question may be describe your experience when paying for a flight online. So we are not asking, well, how much money did you pay or how many people booked this flight online versus uh, at the kiosk. We're actually asking the user about their experience when booking that flight or paying for that flight. And we're not even asking about the payment method, it's just the experience and that calls for a behavioral question. So with qualitative questions in surveys, you can actually survey fewer people and get rich data in form of their responses. So qualitative questions ask for feedback, some comments or suggestions from the users or their experience. Um, whereas quantitative surveys, they ask for, um, the results or the numbers. 
so with that being said um as i mentioned like this was pretty easy right um easy to understand and if it was easy um let me know down in the comments i'd love to hear what you think so let's get to some tips about conducting surveys so uh, the very first tip is basically testing your survey questions so if you're using an online tool to uh, to to for your survey um you may want to actually fill out the survey yourself or ask a friend or a colleague to do that for you before you share that with the users and uh, the other one is make use of easily available tools so if your survey requires your respondents to actually install a tool or register for or sign up to a particular website uh, that may cause uh, some hindrance from from their from their side and ultimately it may uh, be a loss for you so uh, make use of easily available tools and uh, decide your goals for the survey like what do you want uh, from the responses from the survey so designing questions in a way um, and that's my next point asking neutral questions and avoiding any leading questions so if your questions um, are leading the user to answer in a particular or inclining towards preferring one option from the other that may skew your results and uh, this time it's not because of the user's uh, response it may be because your question led them to that response so decide what your goals are and what responses or what information you intend to get from the from the users um, the other tip is limit the number of open-ended questions so if in a survey uh, there are a lot of questions where the user is required to answer briefly in two or three sentences they may get bored pretty quickly and uh, just skip your survey altogether and it results in a loss for you so um, while uh, open-ended questions are extremely helpful it's also important to remember to limit the number of questions um, you ask so prefer more single choice or multiple choice questions uh, because the users are quickly um, able or inclined to selecting one option in the form of your response. Some other tips is <laughs> so like keep your survey short. Um, it doesn't make sense to for for the user to spend about ten minutes or even like fifteen minutes or more than five minutes for your survey. To be honest, um, if if your survey can be answered in in two minutes, like nothing better than that. Um, I tried my survey to basically limit the time that you need to answer within two minutes. Um, if you provide instructions to your users how to answer, uh, they may be overlooked by the users. So uh, keep that in mind and try to explain your question um, in the best way possible. Ask required or optional uh, at the end of every question so i know like some of the questions or some of the tools provide that red color asterisk that means this question is required um and that asterisk is so small it can be overlooked it's a really small thing so it's better to add the word required at the end so the users know that this question needs to be answered um and this is the uh well a very important one actually the next one avoid questions that your analytic tools can answer like if you're using um, an analytics tool for your product um, you get your answers directly from there so it's a waste of time and resource from for for you and for the user to basically answer those questions again um, the next step is create sections wherever possible um, if a like creating sections they help in uh, creating that hierarchy or kind of the progress level uh, psychologically in the user's mind so it's really helpful um, and it it helps when you have so many questions uh, if you have fewer questions that's the best thing um, the next step is count whatever you can count um, so what this means is if something requires a descriptive response from the user uh, it's okay <laughs> ask a descriptive question um, but whatever you can count um, like make sure to count it first so for example um, uh, the example that I mentioned earlier 
so when paying for experience when paying for a flight online so what we can count is basically what mode what payment method we used to uh, pay for the flight um, was it via an external aggregator website or directly on the flights uh, website itself um, that's available readily via an analytics tool so you may not want to ask the user if they if they did that so that's what i mean by analytic tools uh, one thing you cannot count is basically the experience of the user and it may be worthwhile to ask um, an open-ended question of what their experience was um, the next tip is uh, is uh, very important ask one thing at a time so in one question um, set your question in a way uh, that you get one response and that response is um, pretty solid and if it's an open-ended question that response will give you richer information if you ask two or three uh, things in the same question you may not get the best results in uh, in that response and uh, this one the next one is if you have a multiple choice or um, a radio button like question uh, provide choices like none or not applicable or others so that the users are able to select those uh, it, there may be instances where the options you provide for your questions um, they don't apply to all the users so it's it's uh, useful to to provide these extra options so you know uh, well, you missed um, something uh, from your responses, from your options. So now let's get to the tools that you uh, may use. So as I mentioned earlier, um, some of the free tools that you can use readily um, are Google Forms. Um, although this is uh, in in today's kind of world, this may be this may seem outdated, but it works. Uh, Google Forms is a simple way to add to ask questions. Uh, for 100% free you just need a uh, Google account uh, the users more importantly don't need any account from Google and the same goes with Microsoft Forms as well uh, the, the most popular tool I think for surveys is Typeform um, and SurveyMonkey uh, so these both of these tools are actually available for free as well and they have the paid versions too uh, the free versions I believe have some limitations in the number of questions you can ask or the number of surveys you can conduct or uh, the options like uh, certain features may not be available in the free version. So if your survey or you intend to get that response, uh, it's, it's worthwhile to actually invest in these tools. Um, the other survey tool is Qualtrics survey, which in my opinion, again, it's similar to Typeform and SurveyMonkey's. It has a free account and a paid account as well. Uh, have you ever used like another survey tool? Um, so yeah, feel free to let me know down in the comments. Uh, I may have missed that in my research and I'd like to learn from you. So th that's it for this video. And uh, now let's uh, head to the questions that I'm going to be sharing. Um, and by the way, I'm using Google Forms for my survey. Um, so let's let's check that out. So that was the questions that I intend to ask for the language translation UX survey. Um, I would really appreciate if you take the time, just two minutes of your time to answer those. And if you have any questions about surveys or questions about um, asking or reaching out or to the users or tools to use for surveys, feel free to add them down in the comments. Or if you want to talk to me, uh, you can book a one-on-one -on -one call with me for your next UX project. I'll include the link uh, in the description so it's easy for you. If you like this content, uh, subscribe to my channel. It really motivates me uh, that more and more people benefit from my videos. And share this video with your network or your colleagues or your friends or your classmates who may benefit. Um, I hope you like this video and uh, please show your appreciation by hitting that like button. So thank you so much for watching. I'll see you in the next one.